Shall we get started? Yeah? Or will I wait a few minutes? If they hold on maybe one more minute to let uh, more filter through. Let's get started. Welcome everybody to today's webinar. My name is Katrina Power and I'm the manager of the Circular Bioeconomy Cluster Southwest at Munster Technological University. And we are delighted to host today, today's webinar, um, Clara Namara and Ocean of Opportunity in partnership with Nua Namara, who, with Udaris Nguiltikta, also with Hatch and Shannon Applied Biotechnology Center as well. And this event is on as part of the Innovation Enterprise Month, which is taking, which is a number of events taking place all throughout the month um, of the uh, about enterprise and innovation across MTO. So why are we talking about the blue economy today? Well, the blue economy is very important. Um, it encompasses all the economic activities related directly to ocean and seas. So it includes the typical fisheries, aquaculture, coastal tourism, maritime transport, port activities, etc. But also these new emerging markets around biotechnology, algae production, and renewable energy as well, which you might often see in the form of wind energy or wave energy. And this employs over four and a half million people across Europe. And today the speakers are going to speak about the companies that they're working with and the researchers that they're working with as well in, in all aspects of this. And so Kleena the Griffa for, is a business development manager from Nunamara. Nyla Raleigh is the Ireland Aquaculture Community Manager from Hatch. Myself, I'll be, I'll be speaking about the Circular Bioeconomy Cluster and Tim Yeomans will be speaking about the Shannon Applied Biotechnology Centre and how they support companies. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to our MC today, Kleena. And yeah, thank you. Great stuff. Thank you, Katrina. So I'm going to share my screen here. So as Katrina alluded to, we have our speakers here. Sorry, yeah, I'm going to um, pop into this one. There we go. Um, so I am Kieran Yigrifa, the Business Development Manager of New and the Mara. And to give you a quick agenda or a snippet of what we'll be discussing today, we'll have Niall after me and then Katrina and Tim. So I'll kickstart with my presentation. So as I mentioned, my name is Kieran Yigrifa. So Kieran, Fila, Falta and Sha and Yo. And today I will touch on what the marine sector is, its impact in Ireland and globally, and introduce you to New Namara, a dedicated marine um, innovation centre. So when Niall and I from Hatch decided to create this information session, our aim was to showcase the marine sector, the activities currently happening, the supports available to entrepreneurs, and to inspire researchers and students to think blue. So we've um, thankfully got Katrina and Tim on board to showcase what's happening um, in Curie and down in the south of the country. 
So to give you some insight, the marine sector has many individual sectors within it, and there are groupings of the sectors here that are in operation in Ireland. So we have seafood, from wild fisheries to aquaculture, which is the farming of fish, seaweed, shellfish, um, at sea or on land, and of course, seafood processing. We have maritime and coastal engineering and construction, ports and shipping, advanced ocean technology, um, which includes the development of sensors, aqua, tech, AI, or any technology that can be applied to marine activities. We have um, marine and coastal tourism and recreation, and ocean from the energy, anywhere from at sea wind farms, wave or tidal energy. And finally, um, blue biotechnology, which turns aquatic biomass into food, feed, nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, energy, packaging, clothes, and so much more. So looking at, I suppose, the importance of the Irish economy or the Irish um, marine sector to the Irish economy, I focus on four areas of the marine industry, two of which are well established here in Ireland, being aquaculture and seafood processing, both the contribution to huge turnover and some um, over 2,000 and full-time equivalent employees, again, over 2,000 again for seafood processing. And there's also uh, two emerging markets uh, that can be considered advanced marine technology and marine biotechnology. So to recap, the direct impact of the wider marine um, economy to Ireland is over 34,000 employees, 6.23 billion in turnover, and contributes about 1.16% to GDP. So this came from SEMRU, Ireland's Ocean Economy Report, which is um, part of anyway, Galway. So looking at the global context of the green sector, the demand for aquaculture has increased significantly since 1990, 1990 which this graph indicates here. And it will continue to do so for, for the next number of years due to food security, the increase um, in population and the demand for sustainable food production. Ireland is really a small fish in a larger pond uh, compared to the other actors in the global context. Um, aquaculture has been dominated by Asia with um, countries such as Norway and regions in South America also taking a stake. The future of aquaculture is promising, um, however, with increased importance on um, circular production and the development of technology, it is essential for the sustainable growth of this sector. So looking at um, Norway, and uh, they have established um, or placed increased significance on bioprocessing with the cluster established focusing on supporting companies using waste products or side streams of fisheries and aquaculture um, to generate products that give health benefits to humans. Aqua technology is also of huge importance to the global market, where Nile will touch on a little bit later. So getting back to New Namara, who are we? Um, we are a dedicated marine innovation development centre based in the Galway Gwaeltach. So we are a designated activity company, which is fully, which is a fully owned subsidiary of Uderos and Gwaeltachta. And we have two key partners, NUI Galway and GMIT. And we also have support from advisory partners such as Enterprise Ireland and BIM. So New and the Mara aims to give to bridge the gap in research, innovation, industry through commercialization. We support companies um, looking at, I suppose, the soft supports initially. We offer support in terms of training and development, advice, networking, business and development programs. And really, we want to aid researchers, early stage companies, SMEs to navigate the commercialization process. Secondly, we offer facilities such as incubation space um, or, desk, or desk areas in Uthros's GTech network and also larger scale commercial properties too. A key component of the facilities is the partnership with NUI Galway and GMIT to offer a link to their research facilities for further research or research projects. And the final piece of the puzzle is the funding. Um, we offer a link to funding through the Ross Enterprise Ireland, primary production through BIM, and a network of VC funds and accelerators such as Hatch. 
we want to ensure that the companies supported by New Lamar understand the funding mechanisms and the offerings available to them. So looking at the industries we support, we um, support marine technology, pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals, aquaculture and value added products. So here is an example from our trusted colleague at Iceland Ocean Cluster showcasing the many applications of one single raw um, material that could be that being fish. So the traditional production of a fish fillet would normally lead to a lot of waste and that waste would go to landfill. However, with years in R&D, many additional value chains can be created. So this diagram really showcases, I suppose, the, the um, the value chains that have been created. So we've got anything from fish leather, fish collagen from fish skin, medicine from fish uh, liver and intestines, protein, and um, some omega oils. So really this showcases that the green sector can add value to traditional waste streams and produce more than just fish fillets for human consumption. So a sister cluster of IOC and um, the Long Island Ocean uh, cluster has showcased the versatility of seaweed, um, which is a long way away from the storm cast seaweed left on the beach after stormy weather. Um, we can really see, I suppose, the, the, the versatility of seaweed um, looking at um, its potential in clothing, biofuels, health supplements, pharmaceuticals, and reducing the plastic pollution with combustible bioplastic films. So really reducing the requirement for plastic in food products. So if I haven't convinced you of the interesting innovation in the marine sector, here is just one more example. So we have an existing cluster of companies in our region that are focusing on various elements of the blue economy. One company in particular, which is supported by Udrasa is Zone Biomedical, who are developing a bone graft substitute for marine coral. From their research, Zone has found that marine coral grown at their production facility offers a suitable substitute for bone graft material. This is just one um, further example of innovative marine related companies that we support and where we wish to develop the marine sector more here in Ireland. So the future is bright for New Namara as it is a crucial element of Cork Namara, which is a proposed dedicated marine business park with specialised marine facilities. This business park has received significant interest um, to date with over 25 expressions of interest from companies wanting to be located. It's currently navigating um, through the planning process at the moment and is with onboard Plan Ola. Nevertheless, Park Namara is a proposed state-of-the-art low carbon facility. It will have a host of marine services for companies operating in this sector. And I suppose where New and the Mara fits into the general context of the park, it will be a dedicated uh, research or sorry, um, center within the park focusing on innovation, R&D and small scale companies. And really the co-location of the innovation center alongside existing um, more established companies will give access to networks, well-developed industry knowledge and information with the potential to serve new markets or explore the possibility of solving issues that the existing companies in the park face or creating aligning products and services. So looking at I suppose, what will um, what New Namara will have when we have the facility on the site. It'll be about 1,800 square metres of dedicated areas for training, prototype development, workspaces, demo areas, meeting areas and testing areas. So to recap, New Namara is here and ready to support entrepreneurs, spin-outs, early stage companies or SMEs with their marine business journey. We will be showcasing innovation um, in the sector on our platforms, linking individuals with research, with the aim to deliver a job, building, um, building capabilities, leveraging IP and creating new companies. Although our remit um, for support is Gwildoch based companies, as you can see here highlighted in the deeper blue sections, New and the Mar is here to assist entrepreneurs in their journey and we will redirect them to relevant agencies or institutions. 
So we have Catherine Butler in the audience who's from BIM and is working on their aquaculture team as a shellfish development executive. So BIM is Ireland's seafood development agency tasked with supporting Irish seafood industry. So they have a various um, uh, range of support such as funding, training um, and advisory services. So their website has a wealth of um, information if, if anyone's looking for some more or alternatively you can pop a question in the Q&A as Catherine can pop on later in the Q&A session um, to answer any questions that you have. So that's all from me and we'll be moving on now to Niall. Um, Niall hopefully you can share your screen there. And Niall is going to discuss the rest of the innovation in Ireland and the work that he's doing with BIM to drive um, the innovation and the aquaculture technology here in Ireland. The floor is yours, Niall. Thanks, Kleena. Um, so, yeah, my name is Niall O'Reilly and I'm the Ireland Aquaculture Community Manager at Hatch. So I'm going to speak today a bit about Hatch and the background of what we do as a company. And then I'm going to get into the BIM Aquatech Innovation Studio that BIM and Hatch are running this July. So just a quick background about Hatch. Uh, it's an Irish limited company formed in 2017 with the goal to revolutionize the way we produce seafood through investing in technological development. So to date, we've invested in more than 35 companies. Uh, raised our first fund of 8.4 million um, for investing in early stage aquaculture and aquatech. We are currently raising our second fund of $75 million. And we have three physical offices, one in Hawaii, Norway, and Singapore. And the team has grown to 12 full-time members spread across the globe. So that's the team. Um, it's made up of a multi-interdisciplinary skill set ranging from extensive fund management, aquaculture, consulting, finance, and legal expertise that allow us to manage the three business units of the Hatch organization. So Hatch is broken down into three units. The first unit is the innovation services, which is uh, our consulting wing of the business. So we offer global consultancy for industry, for investors, and for different governments around the world. And we do this for different governments in the form of providing innovation studios within those countries. And the objective of an innovation studio is to foster an aquaculture innovation ecosystem and increase innovation capacity of the industry within that country. So we do that for several countries around the world, including here in Ireland in the form of the BIM Aquatech Innovation Studio. But I'll come back to that. Um, so the second business unit, just quickly, is we, we we're a VC, we're a venture capital company. We raise funds for investing in early stage aquatech and aquaculture companies. Um, we raised our first fund, which is now closed at 8.4 million. And our second fund, the Blue Revolution Fund, is on track for $75 million, which will be for investing in 2023. So we do the majority of our investing through the final business year, which is our accelerator program. And what the accelerator program is, in exchange for an equity stake in your company, we offer an investment into your business. And we then put you through an intensive 15 week program across our three physical locations. And that uh, we fly in world leading experts and mentors to help develop your business into the best possible health and chance of success and a return of investment for Hatch. So that brings me on to the BIM Aquatech Innovation Studio. So the Innovation Studio is similar in a lot of ways to the Accelerator program in the way that we use the same mentors um, to come in, the same mentors and more leading um, uh, business experts to come in and develop your business strategy and skills, your product, your team, your support network, and your pitching skills. Uh, the Global Hatch team and mentors will help you validate the scientific principles of your technology, the best market opportunity and approach and work out the best product market fit for you. At the end of the innovation studio, you will learn how to navigate the global aquaculture industry, build your business, present yourself and your idea, and you will have a chance to engage and pitch to mentors and investors. Now, what's different about the innovation studio to the accelerator program is the innovation studio, unlike the accelerator program, is completely free. There's no equity and there's no cost to attend. 
as it's paid for in full by BIM, which is the European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund. Um, in, unlike the accelerator program, it takes place over one month, part-time, two to three days a week, and it will be located across Dublin, Kerry, and one planned uh, field trip to the aquaculture cluster in Bergen. Um, the reason being Bergen being the, the epicenter of salmon aquaculture in Europe, if not the world. So uh, what type of people attend the Innovation Studio? Traditionally, it's made up of 70% startups or entrepreneurs in the first year or two of business. Then we have probably 20% of researchers or students who don't have, they may not have set up a company yet, but they have a valuable piece of research or great idea that they're looking to commercialize and plan to in the future spin out a company from. And then the last 10% traditionally is made up of more established companies uh, seeking market opportunities in the aquatech space. So why attend or why apply for the BIM Aquatech Innovation Studio? Um, so the first line of this slide, I think, sums it up. So building a business is hard, overwhelming work. Good advice is rare, valuable, and even rare to be free. But, but that's exactly what the BIM Aquatech Innovation Studio is. It's the only program of its kind globally that is completely focused on the aquaculture or aquatech sector. So you will receive very tailored and niche advice to the industry. It's limited to 10 participants and of course, no cost, no equity to attend. And I think the biggest selling point of the BIM Aquatech Innovation Studio is its success. So since the first program ran in 2018, we've had, I think it's 33 companies come through that have gone on to raise an excess of $18 million and create more than 130 Irish jobs. So, so you may be thinking, you know, that sounds great, but I, I have nothing to do with aquaculture or fish or even the marine space. And, and that's absolutely fine. I would say 50% of the participants that take part in our program do not come from an aquaculture background or even a marine background. You know, they're researchers, they're engineers, they're developers. Uh, you know, we tend to use the term, the reason we use the word aquatech rather than aquaculture is we're interested in the technology that solves a problem on the supply chain. So the, the three pillars of criteria we look for really is technology novel, is it sustainable, and does it solve the problem somewhere on the global aquaculture supply chain? And what I mean by the supply chain is anywhere from the seaweed, fish, shellfish farm to the plate or the end product. So everything in between, if you have a technology that solves a problem there, we're interested. So this, this slide here, I think is, um, I like using this slide because it, it shows some of the focus areas uh, we've had on the program in the past. So there's a lot of categories here that don't, you wouldn't associate with aquaculture. So we've had geneticists come on, new types of vaccine or developing new vaccines, new diagnostic techniques. We've had engineers, IT and software developers come onto the program with new types of hardware, software, AI technology that solves a problem somewhere in processing or production. We've had nutritionists come on with alternative proteins, new types of additives, right down to, you know, really stuff you don't associate with agriculture, like financial services, insurance, blockchain, this sort of thing. So just again, to reiterate, if you have a technology that solves a problem on the global agriculture supply chain, that's what we're interested in. So I'm just going to um, do, run through a few case studies just to, uh, just to hammer that point home of people who have come from outside of the agriculture industry or aquatech industry and entered the space. So the first uh, company is Wellfish Diagnostics, Professor Brian Quinn. So Brian took part in the 2020 program and Brian came from a research background and was a geneticist. And he's a professor of the University of West Scotland. So traditionally, if you want to find out what, the health of your farm, your fish farm, you take a sample of fish, you kill them, you send them off for testing. And it could take, it could take up to two weeks to get the results back, which is too long in aquaculture because the problem is already in them. So what Brian has done is he can take a sample, or the fish farm can take a sample of blood from a live fish, so no need to kill the fish, send it to him for rapid testing, and, and he can give a rapid fish health assessment to you. 
So I'm very pleased to say that Brian spun out his company in September 2021, and he's going from strength to strength with the health of BIM and the network he's found on the Innovation Studio. So he's not only focused on the Irish agriculture industry, but the global agriculture industry. And the second business is Alun. So Alun, another very interesting company, they were on our first innovation program in Ireland, but they decided to focus on the global shrimp market, which is massive, it's huge. So just a bit about for people who may not know the shrimp industry. So in Southeast Asia, where Alun were targeting especially, what you often get is you get micro businesses. So you get a farmer who invests his entire life savings into one or two ponds of of shrimp that he has stocked. At the end of the year, he harvests all his shrimp, sells them, has enough money left over to buy stock for next year, and his profit is his family's income for the year. Now, that comes with huge risks. If one of those ponds fail or disease or something gets in there and he loses everything, he loses his family's income for that year. And in that part of the world, that can mean not eating, starvation. So, what? A, and as you can imagine, not many, so you would like to expand and you know get more hedge your bets and have more ponds so the risk is lessened but very few banks and lending providers are willing to risk such a risky venture so what alone have done is they've created a standard operating procedure for shrimp farmers in southeast asia and if these farmers abide by the best techniques and use the best technology available to them in that part of the world and receive the alone stamp of approval these lenders and insurers will then back these companies. So there are two very interesting companies, one from the genetics and research world, one from the financial services world that have entered the aquatech space. So I, my name is Niall. I'm going to put my email in the chat bar. Um, if, if you want to apply for the Innovation Studio, applications are now open. Please reach out to me and we can sit down and discuss your application or discuss your project and go from there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it back over to Rasha because I'm going to play a video from Jennifer O'Brien from previously Plant, Ru Plant Ruption, now uh, I think it's CM Believe. I should have known that. Um, but Jennifer came from the food production background and into the aqua tech space. So I might just hand it over to you, Rasha, if that's okay to play that video. And thank you, everyone, for your time. Hi everybody, my name is Jennifer O'Brien and I'm the founder of See and Believe. The company was started a little over two years ago. It really it stemmed from my own personal passions. I, for over 20 years, I struggled to breed. I struggled with chronic asthma. And one area that I was getting some incredible relief from was taking seaweed bats in Enniscrown in County Sligo. And I started incorporating seaweed in my diet and I wanted to learn more about what these amazing attributes were that were helping with my symptoms. So while I was studying an MBA program in Trinity College in Dublin, I used that time to research more on the market, more about seaweeds, more about the plant-based market and decided to start the company. So just to give you a quick background of what the problems that we're actually facing right now and how our company is helping with that solution. So 60% of fish shock around the world is currently at capacity. 30% of fish shock is in complete decline. So we need a solution. The world's population is expecting to grow to 10 billion in the next few years. And we, our oceans just simply can't keep up. So. Our solution is, you know, what if we said that we could create this awesome seafood solution, but without having to compromise on taste, nutrition, or the health of the ocean? And that's our plant-based seafood solution. And we're developing a range of uh, plant-based seafood using Irish native seaweed, the, which is one of the most sustainable crops in the world. And we're also working on a unique microalgae solution with Limerick Institute of Technology. So it's been quite the journey. We're already supplying 50 stores. And this year we managed to secure a pre-seed round with world famous Indie Bio Biotech Accelerator in San Francisco. And I'm currently based here now. 
So with all of these, you know, we're, we're supplying 50 stores in Ireland to super value. The demand is growing. We're currently working with various co-packers around the world to scale up our production. Without having that initial connection with Hatch, none of this would have been possible. Hatch made the initial connection to Windy Bio, our investors. They provided me, they gave me mentorship through their innovation studios. They connected me to other seaweed suppliers on the west coast of Ireland. And all of those connections and business leads were able to, I was able to gain enough knowledge to secure investment in the US. So I'm forever thankful to Niall, Wayne and the team for all of their support and their incredible team and expertise. Um, and I'll be forever grateful. So thank you all and feel free to reach out to me at any point. Thank you. That's fantastic, Niall. A great example of, I suppose, a traditional product. She's a food uh, producing company and she's currently on the East Coast looking for, or sorry, the West Coast looking for um, more funding. So it's fantastic to see the array of different companies that are coming through the innovation studio, contributing to 130 Irish jobs, which is fantastic. A great achievement for Hatch and BIM. So next up, we have Katrina Power, who is going to discuss the Southwest um, uh, cluster. And she'll also have some great examples, further examples of some interesting companies operating in this sector. Katrina, take it away. Thanks very much, Kleena. Can everybody see and hear me okay? Perfect, thank you. Well, um, hi again, everybody. I introduced the session today, but um, here I'm going to be talking about the cluster and what we do here. Um, I'm based at Munster Technological University um, within the CERC Bio Research Group, and I manage the Circular Bioeconomy Cluster Southwest. Um, it's an enterprise Ireland funded cluster and has been so since uh, January of 2021 of this year. So what do we do? Well, our vision is to be a leading regional cluster in Ireland and Europe that relies on enterprise opportunities, collaborative innovation and talent in the bio-based circular economy. We focus on three areas. One is agriculture, the other is marine and waste of value. And in the marine sector specifically, we're working with companies to help them develop their bio-based products and materials for marine material and seafood byproduct as well. And we see this as a big opportunity here across the region and in Ireland as well, tying it all together with what Nile and what Lakina and all the work that Tim is doing as well. We all collaborate in the ecosystem together, supporting each other to help these companies to grow. That's really fundamentally what we're here to do. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are a member, we are funded by the Enterprise Ireland RCTCF programme. And so we are one of the 12 clusters that have been funded and we're based in the Southwest. There's also a blue economy cluster based up in Donegal as well. And that's led by my colleague, Carl Bonner. And he focuses a lot of, on marine engineering and also on uh, renewable energy as well in cases of interest for people to know. Um, but yeah, we're based here um, across the Southwest region primarily. In terms of our membership, we have a number of different types of companies operating in the circular bioeconomy. And I guess circular and bioeconomy, they're kind of loaded um, and very, I guess, complex terms. But really what we mean is we're talking about companies who are developing a sustainable a business who are developing a sustainable product from for the market that's made out of sustainable bio-based materials. So replacing those that are fossil-based and synthetic. And our mission is to help these companies develop, promote, and ensure delivery of these projects that they're doing, alongside with industry and SMEs and government and educational institutes as well. And we focus in on a couple of areas that I'll talk about later. But we also collaborate across Europe and nationally as well with other folks on you know, different types of knowledge exchange opportunities or on different types of you know, larger projects as well, like by Orbic, the SFI Research Centre for Bioeconomy in Ireland, across the Irish Bioeconomy Network, um, with uh, you know, the Bioeconomy Ventures Project, helping companies to access financing and things like that. So in terms of just a couple of examples of companies in the network who are working on interesting areas of the blue bioeconomy and the marine sector, 
So a seaweed is a big um, draw for the companies and there's a number of them working in, in, in this space. So we have BioAtlantis who are working here, Banshee Marine, a research station who remember working on seaweed and aquaculture more broadly as well, Cypercolloids, uh, Nutrimara and Pure Ocean Algae. And they're working across different sectors, whether that's developing uh, products for the cosmetics industry, developing products for the food industry, developing a new types of bio-based fertilizer. I know that's a problem for a lot of people right now and animal feeds as well. And again, a very interesting area and companies are already very active in this space. In terms of other companies that are in the network, we uh, recently Verifact joined our cluster and they're really interesting because they're creating, a, they have a blockchain solution, a distributed ledger technology that can help the traceability of different types of products across the supply chains, um, and which is very important in agriculture, fisheries and many other types of supply chains across the board to prove authenticity of origin of project of, of products. And then in terms of shellfish, We've been working a lot on the valorization of different types of shellfish products um, and also seafood byproduct. And so we've had students uh, work on different types of projects with companies, helping them to identify market opportunities through our, our industry innovation program. We've also had companies in the network as well who are already working to develop a very high end organic compost from seafood processing waste as well. So there, that's just a bit of an example of the companies that are in the network. In terms of the cluster programs, we help companies and the, the members have five key pillars and um, sets so around developing the projects get in, and moving along to get a product to market, helping on knowledge transfer so that companies can access all the right types of expertise they need when they're growing their business, helping on the talent piece. So working on graduate programs and internships and things like that, connecting um, talent with these companies to help them grow. Um, funds, supporting on funding applications, and, and also signposting to the right types of funds that are available for their projects, and marketing as well, helping to tell the story of the companies as well. I also want to highlight a program that's available to companies today and um, as well, and it's called the FanBest Business Coaching Program. Unfortunately, my, my colleague Laura Foley couldn't join us today, but she's managing this, and it's for SMEs who operate in the blue economy. And Laura is a member of the CERC Bio Research Group at MTU as well. And it's an interreg funded project and has numerous partners across the Atlantic region, um, Spain and Portugal and France and the UK as well. And what it does is it offers tailored coaching services to SMEs in the blue economy broadly. And so that in, the aim of the coaching is to support SMEs looking to engage in research, funding or accessing new markets. So can, the, you work one on one with a coach, you develop a tailored coaching plan, you get one to one mentoring to help with your business. And you also get a half day consultation with an industry relevant expert. Um, what's really nice about this program as well, is that it offers socioeconomic assessments, which is quite a hard thing to find. So when it's funded, it's actually a great opportunity. They also help you with crowdfunding if that's the way you want to do your financing. Um, and they also help with networking events and all that type of activity across the Atlantic region. So that's all from me today. I wanted to share just you know a couple of the supports that we have available at the cluster and also at MTU, but also the, the breadth of the companies that we're working with. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, if anyone's interested in contacting me, get in touch and look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Grandma. How about Katrina? And it was great to see, I suppose, some of the companies that you have come across while in your cluster. And a key area of importance for you is the cross collaboration with different, um, I suppose, HEIs, private sectors such as Nile, and interagency uh, communication as well. So it's great that that's a fundamental part of, of the cluster. So next up, we have Tim. And Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, uh, quite last minute, unfortunately, Laura Foley couldn't be with us, as Katrina alluded to earlier. Um, so it's a surprise for everyone to have Tim on board. So Tim, um, you are going to be touching on Shannon ABC and the biomarine innovation that you've been involved in. Yep, that's great. Thanks very much, Clean. And you can hear me okay, can you? Perfect. Thanks very much. So uh, very happy to be here today. And as I said to Katrina yesterday, always great to have people have to sit there and listen to me talk. So uh, happy to be here and share a bit about Channel ABC. So um, just a brief bit of background to Channel ABC first, a bit of what we do, and then a few examples of how we do it in the context of Biomarine, I suppose. So we're around since around 2007. Uh, and I suppose we were set up to look at different types of waste materials and getting value from them. And one of those very first waste materials was fish waste. So very much aligned to the, to the, to the Biomarine. So initially we were a collaboration between IT Tralee and Limerick IT, and obviously there's been a bit of change in the educational sector over the last couple of years. 
And so now we're a collaboration between Munster Technological University, which is IT3 and CIT, and uh, the Technological University of the Shannon Midlands Midwest, which is Limerick IT and Athlone IT, although we're predominantly still based on the Limerick and Tralee campuses. So in terms of, of the structure of Shannon ABC as a research centre, we have a number of different components to that. So there's a circular bioeconomy research group, there's a plant biostimulants research group, the Chimera research group and controlled environment research group, and then Shannon ABC, the technology gateway. So the technology gateway is the industry engagement piece. And so Enterprise Ireland fund these technology gateways to work proactively with industry to help them solve different te technological and scientific challenges. And similarly to the cluster map that uh, Katrina put up earlier on, there's about 15 or 16 of these gateways all based around Ireland and there to help uh, Irish industry. So if you've got any particular type of a technological, scientific challenge, whatever it is, have a chat to one of the gateways and they, that, that's why they're there is, is to kind of help Irish companies. So um, this is a kind of just an illustration of that structure, I suppose, through the technology gateway that engages very much directly with industry, finding out what their challenges are. And based on that, some of those ideas in collaboration with industry can be brought back into the research center, center and funded through different types of mechanisms, such as Science Foundation Ireland, Irish Research Council, and so on. But I suppose the important thing is there is a team of business development scientists and project managers that are there to run the project with industry so that appropriate timelines and budgets can be kept to. Uh, so it's a very important component of what we do, I suppose. So <clears throat> some stats here about Shannon ABC, but I suppose predominantly we work in the area of bioresources and helping companies get more value from bioresources. And whether that be as a raw material or a final product, it's looking what's in the product and, and how can we help a company to valorize that and do something with it. So the way we do that is we've got these technology themes. Uh, and so bioprospecting is looking for high value compounds. Bioprocessing is scaling that up because you might have something that's a very high value compound in your product, but if you can't get it out with it being a very expensive process, then it may not be viable. We have analytical research services. So we've got very nice labs across both uh, Tralee and Limerick. Uh, we can pretty much identify whatever compound we want. And then food innovation. So we've always worked with food, bioresources are very much aligned with the food sector. And this is just calling that out in a bit more detail for those types of companies, I suppose. Uh, and I was just looking at uh, Kleena's diagrams that she had earlier on in terms of that um, biorefinery approach to, to fish waste and to, to seaweed. And I'm very jealous of them because they're a lot more illustrative than what I have here. So uh, what we're looking at here is we, we take in samples from the marine sector. Uh, we have extraction in terms of taking out the compounds, concentrating them down, identification of what the compounds are that are in there because for any company if they can say what the compound is that delivers the activity that attracts a greater value uh, and then looking at efficacy and mode of action of both the product and the ingredients and whether that be using human cells grown in the flasks in the lab looking at that skin cell lines or whatever it is looking at antibacterial activity looking at impact from cosmetics or nutraceutical activity it's that endpoint mode of action how does the, the compound actually work or, or what the impact actually is so at a kind of more granular level, that's what we do with a lot of the companies. About 30% of the companies that we work with are marine companies. Uh, and I suppose in that context, there's a lot of different types of marine biomass. We have worked with fish waste, we've worked with oyster, we've worked with uh, shark byproduct, but two of the kind of main biomass in Ireland, I suppose, are uh, macroalgae and microalgae. Um, and so I'm gonna talk about those just in a little bit more detail in terms of some of the companies and projects we've worked with. So in terms of, of macroalgae or seaweed, you'll have seen Nutramara's logo already. Um, and I suppose just going back very briefly to the previous slide, we, we've done a lot of work with Nutramara over the last three or four years since they were first established, looking at developing that extraction method uh, in terms of a seaweed biorefinery approach. So going back about 10, 15 years ago, you might've been looking at getting maybe one compound out of seaweed or other types of biomass, but in reality, there's so much in there in terms of it being actually commercial, you need to have a kind of a biorefinery approach to be extracting a number of different types of compounds to be getting most value from the seaweed. So I suppose as a case study of different funding mechanisms, Nutramara are a really good one. We've done contract research with them, innovation vouchers, innovation partnerships, and we currently have an Irish Research Council funded postdoc scientist on site in the labs in Tralee, working with Nutramara on development of new extraction methods and identifying new uh, compounds to be included in their nutraceutical products. Um, and more recently, they would, they, they've actually launched one of their cosmetic ranges that we worked on with them as well in, in Brown Thomas, which is absolutely super to see that kind of product on the shelf. And straight up, the, the best bit about this job is when you're working with a company and their product is on the shelf. It's just, it's, it's super. And um, so Nutramara is one of the companies that we've worked with. We've also done some work with Voya, and I'll give a very brief case study of that in just a moment. But I suppose one of the important things is, and I mentioned the kind of different research groups that we have in Shannon ABC, is that 
no one of those research groups is focused specifically on the biomarine sector. They're all focused on biomass or identifying the, um, the impact of that biomass on different conditions. So for the plant biostimulants research group, it's looking at seaweed as a biostimulant. Uh, for the Chimera research group, it's looking at extracts from seaweed from a biotechnological perspective. And for the circular bioeconomy research group, it's applying that concept to uh, biomarine uh, uh, products and raw materials. And they would have carried out a survey uh, recently enough that some of the people on this call may have been contacted about in terms of looking at seaweed, you know, the different suppliers around Ireland, how it's grown, where it's grown, licenses and all the rest of it. So it's that, I suppose, it's the transferable knowledge from different types of biomass sectors to benefit the biomarine sector to a large extent. Uh, in terms of OYA, we worked with them on a kind of a small enough innovation partnership a number of years ago. They wanted to look at seaweed extracts and actually delivering scientific uh, hard scientific data to prove that some of the extracts from the seaweed actually worked in the, in the product. So we took a number of different seaweeds they provided to us. Uh, we did some extractions of those seaweeds in the lab. Uh, and then we would have applied those extracts to human cells, human skin cells that we grew in the lab and looked for activity like antioxidant activity and anti-inflammatory activity. Based on the best activities we identified, we let them know the extraction conditions. Voya took those extraction conditions, produced a, a kind of a prototype product from it, got it safety tested and sent it back down to us. And we've got skin testing probes we can use for cosmetic testing where we use human volunteers. The probes are non-invasive, they just rest on the skin, but they measure things like moisturization, elasticity and skin barrier efficacy. And so we have just shown then that the products that uh, uh, Voya made from the extraction conditions and from the lab data actually had increased activity in terms of moisturization and skin elasticity. And that for us was again, was a really nice project because it went from the lab all the way through to people and showing the impact following through all the way in terms of that transfer of knowledge. So uh, microalgae then. <clears throat> so uh, Sashant uh, is a researcher in, in Tuse in Limerick. And when Sashant first joined Channel ABC about 12 years ago, he went around Ireland and uh, took a lot and lots of samples of water from around Ireland and developed a, uh, a repository of microalgae and cyanobacteria that are proprietary to TUS. And so his research over the last 12, 12 years has been based on looking at those strains and what they can do. So we worked with a few companies in this area. Microalgae, in terms of commercial interest, is still a reasonably early stage in Ireland. Little Samphire Ireland, we've done some work with. I was going to say we're working with four or five companies in that space at the moment, but I wasn't going to say too much about them because it's not in the public domain, but you would have heard uh, the comment there from, uh, from Jennifer earlier on the video. We're doing some work with her in terms of microalgae and developing that for her product as well, which is very exciting. Uh, and we're also just finished a uh, Bordish Guevara funded project, uh, which was based on taking a range of Sashant's extracts, a range of Sashant's microalgae, and going through a funnel to identify which ones have got good activity and can be scaled up uh, in an appropriate way. So working with a commercial grower of microalgae and seeing if the conditions in the lab can be recreated at scale. So the activity for argument's sake that we see for antioxidant activity in the lab, once you've selected that strain, grown it to four or 500 liters, are you still seeing the same level of antioxidant activity at that stage? And in this way to try and narrow that funnel of microalgae and cyanobacteria that could be commercialized. And ultimately at the end of that process to be identifying microalgae and cyanobacteria that then we can use as a technology offering to Irish companies ideally say, look, we've worked with this microalgal strain. This is the kind of activity it produces at 400 liters. Would you like to license it and try and produce a product from it? So. That project has just finished uh, at the end of last year. It was in collaboration, obviously, with Channel ABC, with, with TUS and MTU, with researchers on both sites, but also with Chagas in terms of novel extraction technologies. So we're really excited to start disseminating some of that information, but also starting to look at what we can commercialize around that or what, what next steps we can take to move on with that research. And the final example I'll, I'll give then is um, one that was stimulated by a conversation with uh, ITIP, the Irish Agriculture Technology Innovation Platform. So about a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, we were asked to kind of review some IP outputs from different European funded projects to look at their application in the Irish, uh, from an Irish context. And that kind of stimulated the idea around open innovation. And, you know, there's been lots done around Europe in terms of microalgae and intellectual property, and it doesn't need to be all developed by us, but it can be commercialized by us. So we applied to the Marie Curie Career Fit program uh, for a researcher to come on board with Shannon ABC to do just that, which was basically to look at this 
uh, technology pipeline. So taking different types of uh, internal, external ideas, moving them through this pipeline to try and determine, are, you know, is there legs to them or not? And we've got nice facilities in Shannon ABC. We've gotten funding for a, a food grade microalgal suite, which is being installed at the moment. So a couple of thousand liter raceway ponds, a couple of thousand liter tanks, continuous flow centrifuge that can centrifuge about 800 liters of, of, uh, of media. And so we want to use all that capability to move uh, up the TRL scale, so the technology readiness, technology, technology readiness level scale. So moving IP along, and it doesn't have to be our IP. And so what we're really interested in is this external technology base. And so we've got partners in Italy and Portugal that we have MOUs in place with. We're looking at what they've done with microalgae. So say if they've got it to TRL three, but maybe they're stuck there because they don't have access to facilities, we want to move it to TRL four or five. And then we've enter into an IP agreement with them about what value we've added to that, to that technology. Uh, and so Prashi Varshani started with us just at the end of last year. And so she's the postdoc on this project for the next three years. And so her job is, as well as progressing our own internal IP, to be progressing the Portuguese uh, and, and, uh, and Italian IP, but also, uh, also scouting for new IP uh, that we can identify to license into Ireland, to progress along the TRL scale, and to license back out again. So um, uh, I'm a big fan of dad jokes and bad puns. <clears throat> and so just in the context of the Clare Namara, you know, in an ocean of opportunity, let us be your boat. So that's what we're here for. And that's the, the, the finish of my presentation. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tim. Um, not cheesy at all. <laughs> <laughs> and to add to that, there's also uh, another saying that a rising tide lifts all boats. So really, I suppose that's the context of, of what we're here for today is that we want to show the cross collaboration, I suppose, between different institutes and how that we're here to support businesses collaboratively. We're here for the businesses and wanting to see those companies grow and scale and I suppose create a stronger Ireland Inc. Um, great to see I suppose the info on the microalgae Tim there and that you're really looking at the commercialization piece that's something we have identified that is quite weak that there's an abundance of research here in Ireland on macro micro and linking to the value added and the commercialization piece is often I suppose uh, an area that they fall down Quite exciting. I hadn't mentioned in the, the presentation, we actually just met a company about two weeks ago. They're an engineering company based up in the north, and they've built a, <clears throat> a 7,000 litre uh, photobioreactor. And so they, they know nothing about microalgae, but they know about engineering. Uh, and so they want to apply their engineering skills to something and they thought, listen, let's try microalgae. So we're trying to progress something with them at the moment, but being able to go 7,000 litres of microalgae in one tank, uh, kind of now you're starting to get places, you know. Yeah, that's really great. Um, make sure that you mention Niles Innovation Studio to them. Yeah. As it sounds like they might be a good fit. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Very good. Um, so at the moment, there isn't any uh, questions in the Q&A box. Um, I'd encourage anyone, we have a few minutes left on the call. So uh, multi and Kesh, so if you have any questions, make sure you pop it in the Q&A box there. But I suppose to whet your appetite, I have a couple of questions from listening to the various different speakers here today. Um, so Katrina, I'll come to you first. What is, I suppose, in your opinion, is the main benefit of members in being in a cluster? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kleena. So research has shown when we, we look at the European cluster platform and we're a member of that and they came out with this report about a year ago and it's, they did an analysis of 3000 clusters um, across the EU and they were able to show that uh, companies that were part of clusters, their growth were their growth was faster. They hired more people. They had, And that's because typically what happens is in the cluster, you have access to all the knowledge, you have access to all the facilities, you have access to all the right people that you need to talk to. And therefore, you're speeding up your innovation cycle um, as, you're, as you're trying to figure out your new market, your new product, or maybe you, you have a side business that you think you're trying to integrate into that as well and, and you know that in, integrate the market opportunity into the company so really it's about speeding up the innovation cycle and I guess when we're talking about sustainability and circular economy and bioeconomy we're trying to develop the sustainable economy overall right and that you know we you know there's a we have targets to meet I guess when you're looking at the climate action plans and things like that so if that's how I see the cluster helping to support those businesses with the sustainable value proposition in this type of I guess, you know, policy environment and helping them to accelerate that. So that's kind of, that's where I see the benefit of a cluster. 
Yeah, exactly. And how would members maybe that are listening that haven't, I suppose, looked at joining a cluster before is the first step in the process to reach out to you, Katrina, to set up a meeting? Absolutely. Do please reach out. I'm more than happy to have a chat with you. And as well as that, you know, if you're more aligned to another cluster from around Ireland, maybe, you know, Blue Economy up in, the, up in Donegal or maybe construction or whatever it might be, I'm happy to introduce you to my colleagues. We're all very extremely collaborative and we're always helping each other out. And it's not just about, a, you know, it's about sharing the load as well, like in helping companies identify the right fit. So great stuff. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so Niall, I might come to you in terms of um, looking at the future or, or, or the, the, the new um, applications for the innovation studios. So do you accept applications from individuals or is it companies only? Because I suppose an issue that we've seen with a lot of uh, these bright young things that have fantastic ideas is that they're told, no, you're too early, I'm so sorry, go away, come back to me in a year. So is it companies or individuals or how does it work? Yeah, it's both, Kleena. So yeah, we do accept companies, but we also, so a big part of it is we look for, you know, a lot of people that come on to the course are researchers or students who they have a great idea or a piece of research, but they haven't commercialized it yet. It's just an idea at that stage. So the Innovation Studio is a really good resource for them to strategize how to make that research or that idea into a company. Okay, fantastic. Okay, and the applications are open now, is it? Applications are open now, and um, I think I put it in the chat bar there, but it's hatch.blue. You can go onto the website, and um, my email is also in the chat bar. If you want to discuss before you make your application, I'm always open for a chat. Great stuff, fantastic. Um, and Tim, moving over to you. So what are the areas that companies are leaning towards in, ter in terms of research projects? Is there a particular focus um, or a particular area that has had increased focus recently, whether it be pharma, food or cosmetics? Are you seeing, uh, I suppose, a surge in some one particular area? Um, not specifically, I suppose, certainly with, say, um, certainly with, with seaweed biomass anyway, the cosmetic sector is always kind of one that companies do kind of lean towards a bit more. I think there's a recognition of the opportunity within seaweed and microalgae to add value to that in terms of pharmaceutical applications. But I suppose what, what will generally happen is companies will start off with applications in, I suppose, lower regulatory entry industries like food and cosmetics. And then as they start to establish their footprint in that to move up then in terms of pharmaceutical and that kind of an application, still a big challenge, obviously, with kind of extracts from natural products in terms of that kind of more medicinal application. And I think what you'd probably generally find is that apart from, say, uh, the uh, zone uh, biomedical that you mentioned earlier on, the majority of, of, of natural biomass extracts, if they do have healthcare applications, it'll probably be at a reasonably low end rather than from a drug perspective. Great stuff. Um, really interesting. So I see one question from Michal O'Kaneda. Um, good synergies. Katrina, as you mentioned, sustainability aspects, does your cluster have the capacity or the policy aim to research the environmental impacts of, for example, seaweed harvesting or bioprocessing? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that would be the, it would really come back to the research group, the CERC Bio Research Group. They have done the um, analysis recently on, I guess, where the seaweed is across Ireland. And also they're looking, you know, they would, they would be happy to look at the environmental aspects of that as well around harvesting methods and things, uh, particularly around blue carbon. We hear that term a lot. What's blue carbon? You know, oceans are going to be able to sequester carbon and things like that. Well, what's the right type of methodology and things? And I know this project's happening in NUIG in Galway and Dublin as well, but there's a lot to unpack around that. So I think, yeah, the, the research group are definitely very interested in supporting that. And as a cluster, we're happy to make those connections into other groups too. Great. And actually, this on that as well, you know, last year we hosted a webinar about blue carbon just to start to demystify it a little bit. Yes. So it's on our YouTube channel in case anyone's interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, fantastic, Katrina. Um, we'll definitely redirect any queries to that. So, Michal, um, take it to the YouTube MTU or is it the cluster's uh, YouTube page? It's the cluster. It's the cluster. Yeah, I'll put a link to it. 
Okay, fantastic. And that seems to be all of the questions that we have. And amazingly, we've finished on time, everybody. Um, it's been a great session. And thank you so much, Tim and Katrina and the crowd at MTQ and your cluster for, for letting us come along and uh, do Clore the Mara here. So more to come from this cross collaboration. And I'm sure um, we may have an event or two later in the year. Absolutely. Thank you, Kleena, so much. And thanks to everyone for joining today. Thanks very much. Bye now.